In this video, we're going to take a look at the different types of graphs, ways that we can represent data, and we're also going to take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of each type of graph. So when we finish this video, you should be able to look at each of the different types of graphs and be able to come up with advantages and disadvantages of each, each one. So let's start by looking at the different types of ways we can represent data. One way would be to take our information and plot them on a graph and connect the dots with a line. So this one here we have some magazine sales and we have some different days of the week down here. So there'd be 20 magazines sold on Monday and then 25 it looks like on Tuesday and so on. This we call a line graph. because it's, the graph is composed of a series of line segments. We can also take a look at a graph like this. Here we have how students get to school, in the different categories down here, school bus, car, walk, and so on. And we have the number of students taking the bus, taking a car, walking, and so on. When the graph is represented by a series of bars, we call this a bar graph. And sometimes the information might need to be presented in a double bar graph because here we have number of students uh, that enjoy soccer, softball, basketball, and then other sports. But now we're also splitting up into girls and boys. So we need a bar for the girls, their favorite sports, and a bar for the boys. So this is simply called a double bar graph because we're graphing two uh, groups of people. Double bar graph. And another way we can represent data is with a circle graph. And here we have a graph representing the favorite pizza toppings. We can see that pepperoni represents 50% of the people. So half of the people think pepperoni is their favorite topping. 10% think supreme, 15% think sausage, 25% think cheese is their favorite pizza topping. And finally, we could use pictures to represent our information. So here we have cafeteria ice cream sales. And so they've used a, a, an ice cream bar to represent 100 ice cream bars that are sold. So for instance, in October, there's two of them here, so that must be 100 plus another 100, 200 ice cream bars were sold in October. So when we use pictures to represent our information, we call that a pictograph. So those are the different types of graphs that we should be familiar with. Notice that each one, each of these graphs should have a title. They should have um, the information down on the axis here all of the information should be in the graph. So a title, the information represents so that we know which, which um, color represents which topping. Here we have a title, we've labeled our axes, number of students. We've labeled the uh, bottom axis here, which we call the x-axis, soccer, softball, basketball, and other, those are sports. So really important that you don't forget to make sure that you have titles and all of your axes labeled when when you're drawing your graphs. So if we look at our line graph here, we will use a line graph. Its advantage is it's best for showing information over time. So just make a connection. Remember, line graphs for information over time. So when we look down here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, those are that's a information over time. So line graphs are good when we're showing information over time, we can see how these magazine sales have increased over time, and then something happened on Friday to cause them to the sales to really drop. Um, so line graphs, we use that when the bottom axis here is time. The disadvantage of a line graph is it's not useful for categories. We don't have different categories of information down there. You'll see that when we get to the bar graph. And we also can't figure out percent by looking at the line graph. I know 
that on Monday there were 20 magazines sold, but if I said what percentage of magazines were sold on Monday, we couldn't figure that out very easily just by looking at our line graph. So line graph, best for time, not so great if we're going to be graphing information over categories or determining the percent. Bar graph. The advantage of a bar graph is it's best for comparing information in different categories. So see here, this is how students get to school and we have different categories down here. We have the school bus, which is one category, a car is another category. These are different ways of getting to school. So bar graphs are best if we're comparing different categories. But we would not use a bar graph if we're graphing information over time. This is not time down here. And again, we can't figure out the percentage of students very easily that are taking the school bus. We know there's about 58 approximately here taking the school bus. But if the question was what percent of students ride the school bus, that would take a little bit more work to figure that out. And the double bar graph, again we have categories down here, soccer, softball, basketball, other. So the, the double bar graph is for comparing information over categories, but its advantage is we can now compare two sets of data over categories. So we can look at girls and boys separately to see what their uh, favorite sport is in this case. And the same disadvantage applies here. It's not useful for information over time. We don't have time down here. And we can't figure out what percent of girls like soccer the best, and so on. So we don't have any information about percentage. So that's why we also have a circle graph. Because its advantage is it's best for showing percentages. So I can quickly look at this and say 50% of students like pepperoni, 15% like sausage as their favorite pizza toppings. So the advantage of the circle graph is if you want to show percents, it's great for doing that. Its disadvantage though is we cannot determine the number of things in each category. So if the question was how many people like pepperoni, you don't know the answer to that question by looking at this graph. All you know is that half of them do, but you don't actually know how many. So the disadvantage of the circle graph is we can't actually determine how many are in each category. And then finally, the pictograph. Its advantage is it's best for comparing categories, but using symbols. So we have some pictures of some things, and it kind of looks, it looks kind of neat. We can quickly see from this graph that most people, uh, more people bought uh, ice cream in June than any other month. Um, but the disadvantage with the pictograph is it can be hard to determine the number of items when part of a symbol is used. So if you look at that one in June, we know that this whole sandwich represents 100 ice cream bars. So that's 100, 200, 300. And now what about this little piece? How much is that? Is it, it's, it's obviously less than half, 20 ice cream bars. There's no way of really knowing exactly how much that is. So it's hard to determine the exact number of items when part of a symbol is used. And also, we wouldn't use this we wouldn't use this graph if we're looking at information over time and we can't figure out the percentage again using the pictograph. So those are some of the uh, advantages and disadvantages of each graph.